Okay, now for question number eight from P1 June 2019, international A level. Uh, the curve with equation y equals f of x, where x is greater than zero, passes through the point P41. Given that f dash of x is equal to 4 root x minus 2 minus 8 over 3x squared, first of all, find the equation of the normal to C at P. Okay, so first of all, um, f dash of x just means the same thing as dy dx. If the equation is given in terms of y, then you write dy dx for the gradient function, the differential. If it's given in terms of f of x, then you write f dash of x as the differential. Okay, that's all. Okay, that's the first thing we should realize. Um, so basically, we have to find the equation of the normal to C, the normal to the curve C, okay, at the point P. Now, the normal, okay, is a straight line. Okay, and it's a straight line, like if you have a curve, you have the tangent to the curve, which is a straight line, and you have the normal to the curve, okay, which is basically perpendicular to the tangent. Okay, so this would be the tangent and this would be the normal. Okay, so we need to find the equation of the normal to the curve at the point P. So the normal is a straight line and a straight line is in the form y equals mx plus c. Okay, that's in the form of the straight line. Okay, and in fact this one they want us to write it in this form, the general equation. But basically to find the equation of a straight line you need two things. One of the things you need is a point on the line, which is the point P, okay, which is given to us. All right? And the second thing we need to know is the gradient of the line. So we need to find the gradient of the line, okay, which is the gradient of the normal to the curve. So what we can do is we can use the fact that they gave us the gradient function already. So we know that the gradient function f dash of x is equal to 4 times root x minus 2 minus 8 over 3x squared. So we know that at the point P, at P, we can say x is equal to 4. So we can find the gradient of the tangent to the curve by putting 4 inside this function. That will give us the gradient of the tangent to the curve. Okay, which is going to be 4 times the square root of 4 minus 2 minus 8 over 3 times 4 squared, okay? So that gives us 4 times the square root of 4. So 4 times root 4 minus 2 minus 8 over 3 times 16, 3 times 4 squared, okay? And that will give us 35 over 6. So the gradient of the tangent is 35 over 6. Okay, so that means that the gradient of the normal. Now, what is the relationship between the normal and the tangent? Well, the product of the normal and the tangent gradients is going to be minus 1. They are um, perpendicular to each other, so the gradient of the normal is a negative reciprocal of the gradient of the tangent. So the gradient of the normal is going to be negative, opposite sign, and upside down, 6 over 35. That's going to be the gradient of the normal. Okay, so now we have the information we need. We know that it goes through the point P, which is 4, 1. So we're going to use Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. That's what you need to find the equation of a straight line. So Y minus, now remember this is your X1 and this is your Y1. So Y minus 1 equals M, which is 4 times X minus uh, 4, which is the x value. Sorry, what am I doing? Silly me. m is a gradient, so that's minus 6 over 35 times x minus 4. Okay, so now we have um, the equation. We need to sort it out and write it in the form ax plus by plus c equals 0, where a, b, and z are integers to be found. So the first thing would be sensible for us to do would be multiply both sides of the equation by 35 to get rid of the fraction. So you have 35y minus 35 equals, now you're left with a minus 6 here, so you're going to have minus 6x plus 24, and we want everything to be brought on one side, and it's always best to keep the x term positive, so we're going to add 6x to both sides, so you have 6x and plus 35y, and you've got minus 35 minus 24, 
which is minus 59 equals 0. And there's the answer to part A. Now we're going to go on to part B. So that's the answer to part A. All right, so yeah, I right, answered in that form. A, B, C, the integers. Okay, good. So part B now, um, they've told us to find f of x. So I've taken the information from the first part of the question. So you, you want to find f of x. Now, this is not the original function. This is the gradient function. To find the original function, we have to integrate this. All right, so f of x is going to be found by integrating the gradient function with respect to x. Okay, so in order to integrate a function, we have to first get it ready for integration. So I'm going to write this in index form. So x, the square root of x is x to the power of a half. Okay, you've got minus 2, and you've got minus 8 over 3, x to the power of minus 2. You have to write the, 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 the x terms on, as a numerator. So this x to, the power of, x to the power of 2 underneath becomes x to the power of minus 2 on top, okay, using the rule a to the power of minus m is the same as 1 over a to the power of m. Okay, it's like, this is the rule that we're using. But don't make the mistake of, you know, taking the 3 up as well. Okay, it's just the x squared that we write is going to become x to the power of minus 2 on top. The 3 remains where it is. The power of 2 only refers to the th x, not to the 3. So we've got to integrate this 4x to the power of a half minus 2 minus 8 over 3x to the power of minus 2. All of that is integrated with respect to x. Always best to put these brackets here to show all of these is being integrated. Now, we add 1 to the power. So x to the power of, that's going to be 3 over 2. A half plus 1 is 3 over 2. And divide by the new power, so divide by 3 over 2. Minus 2 times x to the power of 1. It's like it's x to the power of 0 here originally. So you add 1 to the power, it gives you 2x over 1, which is minus 2x, and you've got minus 8 over 3x to the power of minus 1 divided by minus 1, okay, because you have to add 1 to the power, becomes minus 1, and divide by the new power, and then don't forget plus c. When you integrate something with respect to x, when you integrate something, you have to put the constant of integration, okay, you've got to find what that is. So this is now f of x, this is now our f of x. We have to simplify and we have to also find what c is. Okay, so now when you're dividing um, a fraction or you're dividing by a fraction, then it's the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So this is the same as 4 times 2 over 3, which is 8 over 3. So you have 8 over 3x to the power of 3 over 2 minus 2x. Now there's a minus here and a minus there. They're going to become a plus. So you have plus 8 over 3x to the power of minus 1 plus c. Okay, you can leave the answer um, like that for now, but we have to find what C is. So we're going to use the fact that it passes through the point P41. Okay, so it passes through the point P, which is 41. So we can use that fact to find what C is. So remember, this is the x value of the point, this is the y value of the point. This, this point satisfies this equation because this part this this curve passes through that point. So it makes this side equal that side when I put these values in. So if I put instead of y1. Instead of x4, I have here 8 over 3 times 4 to the power of 3 over 2 minus 2 times 4 plus 8 over 3 times 4 to the power of minus 1 plus c. Okay, so what did I write here? So 1. So 1 is equal to, now this is the same as the square root of 4 cubed. Okay, that's what this means. Okay. You have a to the power of m over n is the same thing as the nth root of a to the power of m. The denominator is the root and the, the numerator is the power. So this is like the square root of 4, which is 2, which is 8. So this is 8 times 8, which is 64 over 3 minus 2 times 4, which is 8. And this is like plus 8. Now 4 to the power of minus 1 is 1 over 4. So this is like 8 over 3 times 4 plus c. So we can simplify that a bit further. That 4 cancels with that 8, leaving you with a 2. So you have 64 over 3. Let me just put this in the calculator. In fact, we'll put the whole thing in the calculator uh, to make sure. But yeah, we can put it right from here in the calculator if you wanted to. There's no problem with that. So you have 8 over 3. 8 over 3. And you can do this. You've got 4 
um, to the power of 3 over 2. Whoops, I think I did something silly there. 4 to the power of 3 over 2. Yep. Okay, and minus 8. Oops. Minus 8. Plus, that's going to be 2 thirds, right? 8 over 3 times 4, 2 thirds. Okay, and that will give us 14. So we have 1. The Pentagon. 1 equals 14 plus C, therefore C is equal to minus 13. So then we have our answer F of X is equal to 8 over 3. You can write it in this form if you want. X to the power of 3 over 2 minus 2X plus 8. I can write this over 3X, 8 over 3X minus 13. And there we have our equation F of X. Okay, and there we have the answer. So that's how you find f of x. First of all, you integrate with respect to x. Don't forget to put the plus c. And then because you already know a point on the line, on the curve, you can use that point to find what c is because this point satisfies the equation of the curve. And you substitute x and y values in the left side, which is 1, should equal the right side. So that for that to happen, c has to be negative 13. And there we have the equation of the curve. That's how you find what f of x is. Okay, so there's the answer to that question.